Welcome back to Childhood Under Occupation, a podcast by Defence for Children International, Palestine. My name's Southam. The Israeli government's programme of settlement expansion is one of the violations of international law for which it is most widely known. Israeli settlements are permanent, civilian, Jewish-only communities built on Palestinian land, including privately owned, confiscated land. Over 600,000 Israeli citizens live in these Jewish-only settlements. These settlements are woven throughout the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, often dividing the cities, villages and refugee camps of the around 3.1 million Palestinians who live there. Israel's settlements in the West Bank are illegal according to international law. As part of this illegal settlement enterprise, Israeli authorities utilise a discriminatory housing, land and property legal regime to justify the dispossession of Palestinian lands and the demolition of Palestinian homes and essential infrastructure, including water systems, livestock pens and solar panels. Stationed throughout the West Bank, Israeli soldiers, police and private security firms protect settler populations at the expense of Palestinian civilians. Many settlers also carry government-issued firearms. In such a hyper-militarised environment, disproportionate physical and psychological violence is inflicted on Palestinian children. Settler attacks usually involve groups of Israeli settlers throwing stones and other objects at Palestinians, including children, vandalising and destroying property including homes, vehicles, churches, mosques, schools and agricultural land, including olive groves and animals. Physical beatings are also common. While we were visiting Al Sawiya Luban Secondary School in the Northern West Bank to speak to head teacher Ms. Siyasser and his student Amir Awais, we asked them how settlers impact the school and its children. If you haven't listened to that episode already, Education Under Occupation, you might want to pause this episode and listen to that one first. They see settlers on the main road on the entrance of the school and they usually provoke them either by, you know, um, cursing or shouting at them. Sometimes the uh, settlers start honking while the students are walking and they freak them out. They terrify them. Uh, They do some gestures as well. And he wonders why they do this to them while they're not doing anything like the students are not doing anything to the settlers, they're just going back home, walking. He feels angry, but at the same time, he says he cannot do anything um, because he is afraid of the soldiers that they come might come and do something to him if he gets angry and reacts. Sometimes they go to the Israeli soldiers, the settlers go to the Israeli soldiers and they tell them that children did something to them, even though they did nothing to them. And this could put the uh, children's um, life at risk because the the soldiers will react either by detaining or violating or raiding the school. Since he became the head of the school, there are no uh, uh, life-threatening violations from settlers. They either do uh, uh, inappropriate gestures for the students while they are going back home, or they curse them, they shout at them. But right before he became the principal, and that was in 2019, uh, an, an Israeli settler raided the school with his uh, gun, um, even though there were security forces, Palestinian security forces uh, here inside the school. He came uh, and, uh, you know, he raided the, the, uh, the school with his gun. There was also another incident uh, of a settler while he was driving his car um, at the main road at the entrance of the school and students as well as um, teachers were out of the school and he was pointing uh, he was pointing their um, his gun towards them settlers do false accusations that uh, students 
either attack them or curse them uh, just to uh, let the soldiers raid the school or detain these children. The return to school each September usually means that for Palestinian students living near Israeli settlements, journeys to school and school days will once again be marred by violence and harassment at the hands of Israeli settlers. The Al Khansa Elementary Mixed School and Al Jarmak Elementary School for Girls in Tuku were attacked in March 2019 by a group of 25 armed Israeli settlers. The school staff told DCI Palestine that the Israeli settlers attempted to sneak in, but were stopped by teachers and parents who rushed to the school to help stop the attack. Israeli forces arrived to support and protect the Israeli settlers, firing stun grenades which scared the children. A full school day was lost for over 500 students and teachers. Between January 1st and August 23rd, 2021, the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs documented 321 Israeli settler attacks against Palestinian civilians and their property. In May alone, DCI Palestine documented four Israeli settler attacks in which Palestinian children were harmed, including two children who were shot with live ammunition by Israeli settlers. In August of 2021, Israeli settlers abducted and physically assaulted a 15-year-old Palestinian boy in the Northern West Bank. Tarek was going to the shop to buy sweets with five of his friends at 9 in the morning on August 17th. Their plan was to picnic in an area of their village, Silat ad Dahir, near Homesh, an evacuated Israeli settlement located south of the occupied West Bank city of Jenin. Shortly after the boys' arrival, they heard voices speaking in Hebrew and saw two Israeli settlers in civilian clothes walking nearby. One of the settlers was armed with a handgun, according to information we collected. Frightened, the children fled. Tarek's friends managed to escape through nearby fields, but the settlers chased Tarek in their car down an agricultural road and struck him with it. The settlers then got hold of Tarek and tied him to the hood of the car with chains. They drove him quickly up a hill towards the settlement, breaking suddenly so that Tarek fell hard from the car to the ground. The settlers tied Tarek's hands behind his back with some plastic ties as well as his feet and blindfolded him with a t-shirt. They hung Tarek from a tree, beat him with sticks, burned him and tased and pepper sprayed him. When they cut him loose from the tree, four settlers stomped on and beat him mercilessly. He told DCI Palestine that he thought he was about to die and begged them to let him go home. He lost consciousness and woke up in an Israeli military vehicle and was taken by a Palestinian ambulance to the Jenin governmental hospital. Tarek was lucky to escape with his life. Some Israeli settler attacks against Palestinian children have been deadly. In May 2020, an Israeli court found an Israeli settler, Amiram ben Uliel, 25, guilty of the racially motivated murder of a Palestinian toddler and his parents. In the early hours of July 31st, 2015, he and another masked man threw firebombs into the home of 18-month-old Ali Dawabsha, four-year-old Ahmed and their parents, Saad and Raham, in the northern occupied West Bank village of Duma. The family was burned alive. Ali died during the fire. His parents died from their wounds several days later. Ahmed, who suffered burns over 60% of his body, is the sole survivor of the attack. These convictions are a rarity. Israeli authorities consistently fail to adequately investigate complaints filed with them against settlers, despite persistent settler violence against Palestinians in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem. Israeli authorities have consistently failed to adequately investigate complaints filed against settlers. Yeshdin, an Israeli human rights group, published a data sheet in January 2020 showing that over 90% of investigations between 2005 and 2019 looking into ideologically motivated crimes against Palestinians in the West Bank by Israeli forces and settlers were eventually dropped without indictments. Under Article 4 of the Fourth Geneva Convention, which applies to situations of armed conflict, including occupation, Israel has an obligation to protect Palestinian civilians. Despite this, Israeli soldiers frequently fail to protect Palestinians from settler attacks, and even participate in some cases. Though they live in the same territory, all Palestinians are subject to military law, while Israeli settlers are subject to Israeli civilian and criminal law. In such a system, 
It is little wonder that such unchecked and extreme violence from one group of people towards another has proliferated thus. Mr. Yasser agrees. Speaking of justice, he believes that there is no justice. He mentions the story of, of Amir. He was just walking and laughing in, uh, in the street. No matter what the reason was, he was just a child laughing with his, with his friend. And as a result, the soldiers came and raided the school and tried to detain him. So in his point of view, there is no justice whatsoever. DCI Palestine has documented a sharp rise in the number of Israeli settler attacks on Palestinian children in 2021, and the attacks appear to be increasingly severe in nature. To read our documentation of these settler attacks, visit our website, dci-palestine.org. Please make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. Thanks for listening.